From California State University, San Bernardino, it's Local Matter. Open mic night and cell phone usage. Hello, I'm Arlene Armstrong, and welcome to Local Matters, featuring stories from across the Inland Empire. And I'm Evan Bates. A local coffee shop offers musicians a stage to perform. Reporter Jeremy Sullivan explores the cozy environment that Back to the Grind has to offer. Riverside is home to many aspiring talents. Local coffee shop Back to the Grind is a place for creative individuals offering them a great atmosphere and vibe. Back to the Grind has been going strong for 17 years. Manager Talene Salmazade gives a brief overview of what her coffee shop has to offer. We have multiple open mic nights. We have shows where like we have local bands, we have touring bands that come and play Fridays and Saturdays. Um, we have dance performances from the Gluck at UCR. We have dance performances by smaller groups here in town uh, with like choreographers like Sue Rajinsky. Uh, we have shows with the Blood Orange. Um, we have a lot of different uh, events with lots of different groups here in Riverside. Back to the Grind welcomes many in their cozy environment. Corinne Colson gives her thoughts on the overall ambience. Playing here is really cool. Um, we have the open mics on Monday downstairs and it's a really just kind of open vibe and everybody's really supportive. And then Tuesday nights upstairs and it's just, it's different. It's a bigger crowd and it's, it's, you get the adrenaline going. The community here is really, really good. Uh, we have a very close-knit community in downtown Riverside. Like everybody seems to know everybody and everybody's really supportive and the grind kind of fosters that. So the next time you're looking to have a great time filled with unique creativity, try visiting Back to the Grind. It just may be a great outlet for you. College students are attached to their cell phones more than ever. Reporter Jarrell Balo discusses how the bad habit is detrimental to the learning environment. Most students feel as if their cell phones are attached permanently to their hips. But when that bond cuts into time reserved for learning, has that attachment gone too far? I was able to speak with Donna Gotch, lecturer of communication studies on the matter. So I think, unfortunately, the use of cell phones is much more um, rampant now by students. Almost every student has one. And in terms of the classroom context, I think many students think they can multitask. They can take lecture notes. They can listen to what I'm saying. They can participate in discussion while they're texting their friends or family members. I do not believe that you can do all of those things effectively at the same time. I think they should not have their cell phones on and should be listening to, you know, course content. I find that I have to repeat many things because those are the students that are not paying attention because they're buried in their cell phones. Student Mary Brunetti also expressed her own struggles with cell phones in class. I am utterly and completely, you know, glued to my phone um, for texts, for calls, for, you know, social media. But I've been pretty good about not using my phone in class, um, especially when it's in a smaller setting. However, it's if it's in um, like a stadium room, you know, in like one of the larger rooms, I will tend to use my phone a bit more. But I can't tell you how many small classrooms that I've been in with, you know, 25 people or less, and people will sit in the front row and text. So if you're a student and have the urge to whip out your cell phone during your next class, just think, is it really worth it? For Local Matters, I'm Jarrell Balo. To keep updated on what Local Matters is doing, check out our Facebook and YouTube page. I'm Evan Bates. And I'm Arlene Armstrong. Join us next time for more local stories that matter.